My name is Raghavara Sodabatina. I'm a principal solution architect at AWS. The objective of today's session is to understand what is modern data architecture and how to build modern data architectures on AWS. This is 300 level session, so I will deep dive into few reference architectures using AWS data services spread across databases, data analytics, artificial intelligence services, and machine learning services. OK, let us look at the detail agenda for today's session. First, we will understand why we need to build modern data architecture. In order to build modern data architecture, you need to have a strategy. So we will discuss about modern data strategy to build modern data architectures on AWS. And then I will deep dive into how to build modern data architectures on AWS by using AWS Purposeful Data Services. I will also show you a few reference architectures for common scenarios. These reference architectures can be used across various industries. At the end, I will conclude with few best practices and key takeaways from the session. Let us start with why modern data architecture. First, customers are making better and faster decisions by breaking down data silos. Second, the right data strategy can improve customer experience and loyalty. Third, customers are using data-driven insights to innovate faster and outpace the competition. Fourth, customers are leveraging data to understand business situations, predict future outcomes, and prescribe solutions for the future. Finally, customers are optimizing their business process with data and reducing overall operational costs. But you need to deal with many challenges because data volumes are increasing, exploding from terabytes to petabytes, sometimes exabytes of data. You can see there are new types of data, like structured data, unstructured data, streaming data in real time. On-premise data stores and data solutions can't handle these data volumes because they don't scale well enough and they are too expensive. You also need to work on machine learning adoption to innovate for the future. Data security, data compliance, and other capabilities are also important. You need to have a strategy to overcome the challenges. Let us learn more about modern data strategy. There are three pillars to build modern data strategy. Modernize, unify, innovate. You should modernize your data infrastructure by moving to cloud rather than self-managing the infrastructure. You need, to fi you need to unify your data by breaking down data silos so that data can put to work across the databases, data analytics, machine learning services. The third pillar of modern data strategy is innovate, where you can invent new experiences and reimagine existing processes. With modern data strategy, you can move and store any amount of data, and you can access the data seamlessly. You can also control who has access to the data with the proper security and data governance control. These pillars do not require sequential implementation. You can be working on all three in parallel, depending upon your data journey. Let us start with modernize. You can migrate and modernize your operational databases into cloud with purposeful databases to reduce your operational overhead and to improve your application performance. You can build scalable data lakes, use broad and deep collection of purposeful data services, you also need to build unified data access and security controls. You should be able to scale your systems at low cost without compromising performance. Also, you need to work on accelerating the pace of machine learning by standardizing machine learning across the organization with scalable infrastructure 
and integrated machine learning tools for all types of ML users. Next, Unify. To make decisions quickly, you need new data stores that will scale and grow. You need to unify your data across databases, data lakes, data analytics, and machine learning services. You also want to connect all of them together, including data, data lakes, data warehouses, and all other purposeful data stores in a coherent way. And finally, innovate. Innovation happens at various stages of modern data strategy. You can build modern applications by using relational databases and non-relational databases that are purposeful to solve specific use cases. You need to use the right tool for the right job by leveraging purposeful data services to derive deep and comprehensive data analytics and machine learning to build better customer experiences and to innovate for future. Now we learned about modern data strategy. Let us deep dive into how to build modern data architectures on AWS. With modern data architecture, you can bring data from a wide variety of data sources. It is enabled by a set of technology building blocks that help you manage, access, analyze, act on your data. It gives you multiple options to connect to your data sources. It empowers your teams to run machine learning or analytic workloads by using their prepared tools and technologies. You can also control who has access to data with proper security and data governance controls. It lets you break down the data silos. It gives you best of both data lakes and purposeful data stores. It enables you to store any amount of data at low cost. AWS provides the most comprehensive tools for the end-to-end -end data journey. Let us put AWS modern data architecture into action. This is the modern data architecture on AWS. It has five pillars. Data at any scale. You can use Amazon S3 to build scalable data lakes. You can use purposeful data stores like Amazon DynamoDB for NoSQL databases, Amazon Aurora for relational databases, Amazon Redshift for data warehouses. Best price for performance. You can achieve best price for performance by using AWS purposeful data services. Seamless data access. We can move data seamlessly by using AWS Glue. You will learn more about how AWS Glue can be used to seamlessly move data across various data sources. Unified data governance. You can use AWS Lake Formation to build data governance on AWS. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. You can use purposeful AI services like Amazon Personalize to build personalized recommendation, Amazon Fraud Detector to build fraud detection use cases. You can also use Amazon SageMaker to build end-to-end -end machine learning workloads to solve a business problem. We'll break down all these services once we introduce building blocks for modern data architecture. Before we finalize building blocks for modern data architecture, you need to work on data discovery. Data discovery is the first step in building modern data architecture. First, you will define business value by conducting multiple interactive sessions. Second, you will focus on who are your data consumers. There could be many data consumers, data analysts, data engineers, business analysts, and data scientists. Third, you will focus on your data sources and tools to bring the data into your data platform. Fourth, you will focus on data storage, data cataloging, data security, data compliance, and data access requirement. Finally, you will focus on data processing to enable your user personas for purposeful data analytics, data engineering, and machine learning. Building blocks modern data architecture is a layered architecture. Envision modern data architecture as a stack of six layers. Data ingestion layer. Bring the data into your data platform. You can, you can ingest data into your storage layer using AWS database migration services, AWS lake formation blueprint, 
and AWS Glue. You can also use either Amazon Kinesis data streams or Amazon MSK to ingest streaming data into your storage platform. They both are designed to build streaming data architectures on AWS. Data storage layer, store structured and unstructured data. Amazon S3 is the foundation for your storage layer. Data cataloging layer. When you are ingesting data from a wide variety of data sources, you need to have a data catalog. You can use AWS Glue data catalog to create central meta catalog for all of your data sets. Data processing layer. You need to create data processing pipelines. To build data processing pipelines, you can use either AWS Glue or Amazon EMR with AWS step functions depending upon your use case. Data consumption layer. Enable your user personas for purpose-built data analytics and machine learning. For example, use Amazon Athena for interactive queries, Amazon Fixit for business intelligence, Amazon SageMaker for machine learning workloads. Security and governance. Protect your data across all the layers. Build course kind access controls by using AWS Identity and Access Management and use AWS Lake Formation for fine-grained access controls. If we put all six layers together, this is the layered modern data architecture. There are two main advantages of layered modern data architecture. First, you can build it incrementally. Second, when you make a changes to one layer, it doesn't impact on any parts of the architecture. Your storage layer is consist of landing zone or a raw zone to store raw, zone, raw data, transform zone to store transform data, curator zone for storing enriched data. Let us zoom into each of these layers. Let us start with data sources. You must first identify your data sources and tools to bring the data into your storage layer. There could be many data sources. For example, there could be a structured data from ERP applications and CRM application. There could be semi-structured data from web applications and NoSQL databases. And then there could be unstructured data from IoT sensor data. Let us deep, let us deep dive into data ingestion layer. Data ingestion layer is responsible for bringing data into storage layer by using AWS purpose-built data services. They are designed to ingest data from a wide variety of data sources to support UniQ data sources and UniQ data types. There could be many data sources, like database data sources, file shares, SaaS application, as shown in the slide. Let us zoom into each of these data sources and tools to bring this data source data into your storage layer. Database data sources. Many organizations are storing their operational data in databases. They are looking for ways to derive insight from their operational data to understand how their business is doing in real time. With AWS database migration service, you can ingest data from databases directly into your Amazon S3 data lake landing zone or Amazon Redshift data warehouse staging tables. You can also ingest your database data into data lake and data warehouses simultaneously. You can also use AWS lake formation blueprints to bring data from your databases. Behind the scene, you'll be using AWS Glue jobs to bring the data from your databases into your storage layer. We recommend you to use AWS database migration service for change data capture use cases. File shares. Organizations are storing business application data in files that are stored in network storage drives. These business application data contain valuable data. So organizations would like to bring this file share data into storage layer to derive insights from the file shares and to make a critical business decision. You can deploy AWS Data Sync agent, connect to your file system, select your AWS storage destination, that could be your Amazon S3 landing zone, and start moving the data between them. You can also use Snowcone device to bring the data into AWS. We recommend you to use AWS Snow Mobile for petascale data transfer use cases. 
SaaS application data. The adoption of SaaS application usage is rapidly increasing. Many organizations would like to bring the SaaS application data to unlock the value of SaaS application and to derive data-driven insights. Amazon Upload is a fully managed service. It can connect to various SaaS applications like Salesforce, ServiceNow, Data, Datadog, and then ingest SaaS application data into your Amazon S3 data lake landing zone or Amazon, S, uh, Amazon Redshift data warehouse staging tables. Amazon Upload has a native integration with AWS Glue, CloudWatch events, so that you can build data ingestion pipeline seamlessly. Partner data feeds. Organizations are exchanging data files with partners. Very often, these partner data feeds contain valuable data too. Typically, these partner data feeds exchange through FTP. You can use AWS SFTP to bring partner data feeds into your storage layer. Third party data sources. Many organizations are looking way to improve their end user experience by combining their internal data with third party data sources like Market Insight, Historical Data Feeds, and Consumer Data Feeds. You can ingest third party data feeds into Amazon S3 Data Lake Landing Zone by subscribing to third party data products using AWS Data Exchange. AWS Data Exchange includes hundreds of data sets collected from popular public sources. AWS Data Exchange is a fully managed service. You can easily find and subscribe to data products in AWS Marketplace as well. Custom data sources. Many organizations are using a wide variety of custom data sources to meet their business application data requirement. They're looking for ways to bring these custom data sources into storage layer to make a meaningful business decision. AWS Glue connectors can, can discover and integrate with a wide variety of data sources, such as SaaS application or any custom data sources. We have close to 100 plus connector as shown in the slide. You can also look for connectors in AWS Marketplace and begin your data ingestion process within minutes. AWS Glue custom connectors provide a framework to develop, validate, deploy your own custom connectors as well. Streaming data sources. Streaming data includes log files generated from your applications, IoT sensor data, social media feeds. Use IoT core to ingest IoT sensor data into Amazon Kinesis data streams or Amazon MSK. Use Kinesis agent, Amazon Kinesis agent, to ingest streaming data into Kinesis data streams. Similarly, use Amazon MSK Connect to ingest streaming data into Amazon MSK. Use database migration service for change data capture use cases. You can use AWS SDK to bring streaming data from your applications. Now, if you put everything together, this is the ingestion layer architecture to enable diverse data types and diverse data sources. I know the diagram is pretty small. You can take a picture of it. Now, we talked about data ingestion. Now, let us zoom into data storage layer. Data storage, is, data storage layer is responsible for storing structured data, semi-structured data, unstructured data. The modern data architecture storage layer is combination of a Amazon S3 data lake, Amazon Redshift data warehouse. Your storage layer is a consist of landing zone or a raw zone to store raw data, transform zone to store transformed data, curated zone for storing enriched data. Amazon S3 is capable of storing exabyte scale of data for all types of data, structured data, unstructured data, semi-structured data. Whereas Amazon Redshift is a cloud data warehouse, it can store structured data and semi-structured data. Typically, Amazon Redshift is used for business intelligence report and interactive queries. Whereas Amazon S3 data is typically used for interactive queries, big data processing, and machine learning. You can bring data from a wide variety of data sources into your storage layer, like Amazon S3, into, uh, and then subset of Amazon S3 data lake data can move to Amazon Redshift data warehouse 
by using a copy command. Similarly, you can move subset of data warehouse data from Amazon Redshift using data lake export feature. You can use Redshift Spectrum to query data from your data lake and data warehouse. You can use federated queries to query across your data warehouse, data lakes, and operational databases. Redshift ML make it easy for SQL developers to build machine learning workloads on top of their data warehouse data. Now we learned about data storage. Let us zoom into data cataloging layer. When you are building a modern data architecture on AWS, you will start ingesting hundreds to thousands of data sets from a wide variety of data sources. A central data catalog is needed for our data sets. We can use AWS Glue Data Catalog for our central data catalog. AWS Glue Crawler can scan your data, and then it can create a central data catalog for our data sets. AWS Glue Data Catalog integrates with many AWS services, like Amazon Redshift Spectrum, Amazon EMR, Amazon Athena, Amazon Kinesis Data Streams, and Amazon MSK. Now let us zoom into data processing layer. You can build multi-step batch, sorry, you can build multi-step batch data processing pipelines by using AWS Glue with AWS step functions that can catalog, transform, enrich your data sets into raw, transformed, and curated data zones. Amazon EMR also provide another option to build batch data processing pipelines. You have multiple options to process your streaming data. Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics for stateful and complex data streaming processing. AWS Lambda is good for simple stateless streaming data processing. AWS Glue for near real-time streaming data processing. Use Amazon EMR to use popular big data frameworks like Spark, Hadoop, et cetera. Data processing with AWS Glue. AWS Glue provides serverless data processing runtime where you can process structured and unstructured data. With AWS Studio, data engineers can build data processing jobs visually without writing any code. Similarly, with AWS Data Brew, data scientists and data engineers can build data processing pipelines by using 250 plus recipe jobs without writing single piece of code. AWS Glue Interactive Sessions comes with Jupyter Notebook, where data scientists and data engineers can incrementally build data processing pipelines. You can, you can use AWS built-in workflows or AWS step functions to build, data pricing, uh, to build data processing pipelines with AWS Glue. We talked about seamless data movement with AWS Glue. With AWS Glue, you can seamlessly move data across many data stores. If you look at the below slide, you can use AWS Glue Connector to connect your data sources and bring the data into your storage layer. Once your data is in storage layer, you can use the AWS Glue Crawlers to create a data catalog for your data sets. Once data catalog is available, you can use either Glue, AWS Glue Studio or AWS Glue Data Brew or inter uh, Glue Interactive Session to process your data. Once your data is transformed, you can move transformed data into your Amazon S3 data lake. You can also move subset of transformed data into Amazon Redshift data warehouse. Or you can also move transformed data into NoSQL database like Amazon DynamoDB, where your application can consume. Let us spend some time on data processing with Amazon EMR. Amazon EMR provides managed runtime where you can process structured and unstructured data using compute clusters. To build data processing pipelines, Amazon EMR provides open source big data frameworks such as Spark, Hadoop, Hive, Flink, et cetera. For data processing, data engineers and data scientists can use EMR Studio, which comes with Jupyter Notebooks. They can build the data pipelines. You can also use either self-serviced Apache Airflow or MWA, or use AWS step functions to build data processing pipelines with Amazon EMR. Let us zoom into data consumption layer.
Use right tool for the right job by using purposeful data analytic services. For example, you can use Amazon EMR for big data processing, Amazon Athena for interactive query, Amazon Kinesis data streams, and Amazon MSK for real-time analytics, Amazon Open Search for operational analytics, Amazon Redshift for cloud data warehouse, Amazon QuickSight for business intelligence, and AWS Clue for data integration. Use purposeful databases for a specific use cases and business requirement. For example, you can use Amazon RDS and Amazon Aurora for relational databases, Amazon DynamoDB for NoSQL databases, Amazon Neptune for GROP databases. We're also bringing machine learning closer to data services. We have like machine learning integration with Aurora ML, Neptune ML, Redshift ML, which we talked about, as well as Athena ML, QuickSight ML as well. Data consumption layer with machine learning. As I mentioned previously, SageMaker is a service with a lot of different features and capabilities in it. We typically talk about those capabilities into four categories. Data preparation, model build phase, model training and tuning, deployment and hosting. With these four categories, machine learning injuries can build end-to-end -end -end machine learning workloads on AWS by using SageMaker. Data consumption through AI and ML frameworks. You can build business intelligence applications by using purposeful AI services like Amazon Personalize for personalized recommendation, Amazon Fraud Detector for fraud detections, and Amazon Kendra for such use cases. You can also use ML frameworks for experienced developers based on their interest as well. You can empower all personas by using AWS modern data architecture. Let us take a, let us take a look at few data consumption patterns here. Use Amazon Redshift and Amazon Kipsight for business intelligence dashboard. Use Athena and Amazon EMR, Amazon Redshift for self-service analytics. You can also use Amazon Redshift data sharing, AWS data exchange, to exchange the data between internal and external users. You can use Amazon Kendra and Amazon Open Search Services for enterprise search and uh, observability use cases. Let us dive into last pillar, security and governance. Data governance plays a key role in modern data architecture. Data security, data discovery, and other capabilities are also important. Encrypt your data at rest in motion. This slide provides a list of AWS services for data security and data governance. As we discussed earlier, you can use AWS identity and access management for coarse-grained access controls, AWS lake formation for fine-grained access controls. Let us talk a little bit more about AWS lake formation. You can build fine-grained access controls by using lake formation at database level, table level, column level, as well as row level. Or you can also take advantage of tag-based access controls. AWS lake formation has a native integration with many AWS services, as shown in the slide. Data governance with data mesh architecture. If you want to build an enterprise data platform where you have multiple data producers and multiple data consumers, you can use data mesh architecture by using federated governance with data permissions managed by AWS lake formation. Now we learned about layered modern data architecture. Let us apply what we learned. Let us deep dive into few reference architectures for common scenarios. Again, these reference architectures can be used across various industries. We talked about modernize. You can build modern applications by using AWS purposeful databases to decouple your data and to improve your application performance. For example, your product inventory data can be arranged with key value fair for faster access. So you can use Amazon DynamoDB for your inventory data. Your, order, your, order, your orders might need a relational database, so you can use Amazon Aurora. Your shopping cart need low latency access, 
So you can use Amazon Elastic Cash for your shopping cart. Similarly, you can use Amazon Open Search Service for your website search on your product catalog. For more details, please look at below AWS block. This is the modern data analytics reference architecture. You are not going to use all these services. As we discussed about different layers, you are going to choose services depending upon your use case and business requirement. For more details, please refer to AWS reference architecture. This is available over public internet. Modern data streaming architecture. With AWS modern data streaming architecture, you can derive low latency insight from your streaming data. The modern data streaming architecture can be designed as a stack of five logical layers. We already discussed about streaming data sources, streaming data ingestion, and streaming data processing. But let us recap everything once again to bring holistic view of AWS, data, AWS modern data streaming architecture. Let us start with streaming data sources. Your streaming data could be logs generated from application logs, IoT sensor data, social media feeds. Use IoT core to ingest IoT sensor data into either Amazon Kinesis data streams or Amazon MSK. Use Kinesis agent to ingest your streaming data into Kinesis data streams. Use Amazon Kinesis MSK Connect to bring streaming data into Amazon MSK. Use database migration service for change data, cap uh, for change data capture use cases. You can use AWS SDK to bring streaming data from your application. Your streaming storage can be Amazon data streams, Amazon Kinesis data streams, or Amazon MSK, depending upon your use case. Later part of the session, when you get into the best practices, we'll talk about when to use Amazon Kinesis versus Amazon MSK. Streaming data processing. Use Kinesis data analytics for complex, for complex and stateful streaming data processing. Use AWS Glue for near real-time streaming data processing. Use Amazon EMR for using big data frameworks like Apache Spark, Hive, Plink, et cetera. AWS Lambda is good for simple, stateless streaming data processing. Now, let us talk about uh, streaming destination. Your streaming destination could be a data lake, data warehouse, or it could be a purposeful data stores. Amazon Kinesis Firehose can deliver streaming data into a Amazon S3 data lake, Amazon Redshift data warehouse, or Amazon Open Search for operational analytics. Sometimes your streaming destination could be a data-driven application. For example, the data-driven application could be a fraud detection where you need to make a decision whether the transaction which is coming is a fraudulent or legit. And sometimes it could be an interaction dashboard where you need to build interaction dashboard. And sometimes it could be an automated alert based on your business metrics. Now let us talk about operational analytics reference architecture. This operational analytics reference architecture can be used to monitor your applications. There are producers. Producers can be application logs, security logs, or AWS service logs. And you need, you need a layer called collectors to collect all these logs to bring forward. We have some examples here. Amazon Kinesis agent and CloudWatch agent can sit in on top of your application servers. And we have some other uh, open source log collectors like Beats, FluentBit, FluentTD. And also, we need to have some kind of an aggregation layer to collect the data from the collection layer and then transfer the, move the data to Amazon Open Search Service. Here we have, here we have some examples on our aggregation layer, Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose, Amazon MSK, and some of the open source like uh, Logstash. Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose can deliver your logs data directly into Amazon Open Search Service. Once data is in Amazon Open Search Service, you can create a business user-friendly dashboard by using Amazon Open Search dashboards. Business intelligence reference architecture. You can use business intelligence reference architecture for your data visualization use cases. Data sources can be a data lake, data warehouse, or databases, or any non-traditional databases like Oracle, Microsoft SQL, or it could be a MySQL, Snowflake, and many more. QuickSight can be used for many multiple use cases, 
like interactive dashboards for our business users, generating email reports on a regular basis. You can also build embedding dashboards for our internal and external websites. As we discussed earlier, SageMaker can be used to build end-to-end -end machine learning workloads right from the data preparation, model build place, model training and tuning, model deployment and management. This is the reference architecture, SageMaker reference architecture to build end-to-end -end machine learning workloads. You can look at this reference architecture for more details. Building real-time recommendation. We have been talking about using Amazon Personalize for building personalized recommendation. You start with creating, you start with uh, creating data set group with your items metadata, user metadata, and interaction data. Once you upload these all data sets into Amazon Personalize, you need to create a solution to try in the model. Once your solution version is ready, you need to create a campaign. Campaign is nothing but machine learning interface to integrate your application. You can get recommendations from Amazon Personalize through AWS Lambda function that can be called from your application or mobile app. You can also get real-time recommendations by interacting real-time with Amazon Personalize. Event Tracker is the way to do it. You can build the event collection pipeline from your application by using Amazon API Gateway, Amazon Kinesis Data Streams, and AWS Lambda. You can also store real-time interactions in Amazon S3 for future model training. If you, learn, if you want to learn more about how to build personalized recommendation, please look at below AWS block. Building prod detection system on AWS. This reference architecture can be used to build prod detection by using Amazon MSK and Amazon fraud detector. You can get the user transaction either from AWS Lambda or you can use Amazon Event Bridge to simulate the transaction. Amazon MSK can collect those transactions, and Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics can read those transactions and make a call to Amazon fraud detector to get the fraud detection results. And then it can write the fraud detection result into another MSK topic. From there, AWS Lambda can collect it and send an automated email by using Amazon SNS. You can also use Amazon MSK to connect and get this fraud prediction results and build a user-friendly user -friendly dashboard by using Amazon OpenSearch dashboards. If you want to learn more about how to build fraud detection system on AWS, please look at uh, below AWS blog. Building event-driven architecture with IoT sensor data. We have been talking about IoT sensor data. This reference architecture can be used for multiple use cases. For example, industrial IoT use cases where you can monitor industrial machines. And then other use case can be medical device data collection for personalized patient health monitoring. You can collect IoT sensor data locally by using IoT green grass and then use AWS IoT core to ingest data into Amazon Kinesis data streams. And you can use Amazon Kinesis data analytics to process IoT sensor data. And then Amazon Redshift can collect the data and it can use for further business intelligence dashboard. Once your model is trained, you can use AWS Lambda to invoke the inference. And you can, you can uh, transfer those uh, inference results to Amazon OpenSearch to build a dashboards. If you want to learn more about how to build end-to-end data-driven architectures with IoT sensor data, please refer to below architecture. Let us talk about best practices and key takeaways from this session. Data discovery should be your first step in building modern data architecture. If you want to learn more about data discovery, how to perform, please refer to AWS Well-Architected Lens data discovery section. I wrote this section as a part of Well-Architected Lens version two. You must define business value and then identify your data sources and user personas to achieve desired outcome. You need to have a business outcome or a business goal or a business objectives to build a modern data architecture. Always tie back your modern data architectures to your business outcome. As we discussed about it, 
migrate, modernize your databases into cloud by using relational and non-relational databases. For example, you can use Amazon RDS and Amazon Aurora for relational databases. Let us talk a minute about when to use Amazon RDS, when to use Amazon Aurora. If you have a commercial databases like Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, you can migrate and modernize your databases into Amazon RDS to reduce operational overhead. If you are dealing with open source databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL, you can either move to Amazon RDS or Amazon Aurora. Amazon Aurora version of MySQL and PostgreSQL provides better performance and high availability. For non-SQL databases, you can use Amazon DynamoDB. We talked about building a modern applications where you need a key value fair. That's where you can use Amazon DynamoDB. And for Grab database, you can use the Neptune databases. Now, we talked about the data tiring. Data tiring is very important. Always arrange your data lake storage in a landing zone or a raw zone to store raw data. Transform zone for storing transform data. Curated zone for storing enriched data. Sometimes you might need to have a raw data for your security and audit compliance needs. Again, take advantage of Amazon S3 storage classes. We, talk, we have been talking about database, data lake landing zone, and uh, data lake transform zone. Generally, when you ingest a data from a wide variety of data sources, either a landing zone or a transform zone is kind of a temporary storage, so you can use Amazon S3 standard. For sometimes, if you don't know the data access patterns about your landing zone or a transform zone, you can use Amazon Intelligence Tiring as well. Sometimes, once you process your uh, raw zone data and transform zone data, you can move that to historical storage like Amazon S3 Glacier. And for data lake, which is your curated zone or enriched zone, we always recommend you to use uh, Amazon Intelligence Tiring because it can automatically move data into different types based on your access patterns. In AWS, everything is zero trusted. Until unless you provide, for example, Amazon EC2 cannot talk to Amazon S3 until unless you create a role or a policy. That's called zero trust. So always create IAM control access for Amazon S3 and all AWS data services. Create IAM roles for different groups based on user personas. Encrypt your data at rest or in motion. We have been talking about coarse grain access controls. Let us deep dive into what is coarse grain access controls. You can create IAM roles for all of your user personas. Your user personas could be a, like a support users for operational analytics, or maybe business user for business intelligence. And then create those user roles, and then take that user, uh, that IAM role, go to AWS Lake Formation, and then you can do the fine grained access control, maybe at the table level, maybe at the database level, at the column level. That is called fine grained access control. Let's talk about file format. There are different data file formats, depends on your use case. For example, CSV is a, we call as a row, 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 row kind of a data format. It is good for small volumes. And Farket, data stored in a column format where you can do the compression at the column, column level. And it is good for complex and large data volumes. We always recommend compress your smaller files into large files. For example, if you have many small files, we recommend using Amazon EMR to compress your files into small files, sorry, to compress your files into large files. We always recommend automate your data pipelines. We have been talking about using either AWS Glue built-in workflows or AWS Tab functions. Always try to automate all these data ingestion workflows. For example, if you are expecting to get a data ingestion for every four hours, try to create a CloudWatch matrix and CloudWatch alarms so that you can notify the team and then you can fix the issues then and there. Now let us talk about data processing. You have to choose correct data processing 
based on your uh, specific use case and business requirement. So let's talk about AWS Lambda. AWS Lambda is good for stateless data stream passing. Sometimes, for example, if you wanted to just convert a file format. Let's say if you are building a operational analytics by using uh, Amazon Open Search service, you can collect your uh, web server logs that might not be in a format which Amazon Open Search service is looking because Amazon Open Search needs JSON format. That's where you can use the Lambda to convert your web server logs into JSON format so that Amazon Kinesis Firehose can deliver your web server log files into Amazon Open Search for operational analytics. Now, Kinesis Data Analytics. If you are dealing with complex data processing with stateful, with stateful streaming data processing, we recommend to use Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics. Amazon EMR, if you are dealing with uh, big data frameworks like Hadoop, Apache Spark, Hive, then you can use Amazon EMR. AWS Glue is a serverless Apache Spark engine. It is not only just uh, data processing. As we talked about, it is a data integration tool where you can bring the data from multiple sources, and then it can discover and scan the data, uh, data, data sets and create a data, log, uh, data catalog for you and then you can do the data transformation and move to data, uh, move to different data stores. So now let's talk about when to use Amazon EMR Apache Spark versus AWS Glue Apache Spark. It all depends on your use case. Start with AWS Glue, and uh, if you have very, very large data sets, maybe you might need to use uh, Amazon EMR. I mean, it all depends on your use case, how many data fields in your data, very large. <laughs> I can't quantify it. Uh, but another uh, situation where you want to use Amazon EMR could be like if you are dealing with Apache Spark, where you want to make custom configuration, you can't do with AWS Glue because it is serverless. But with Amazon EMR, with a cluster on it, your own cluster, you will have access to Amazon Apache Spark where you can make some custom configuration as needed. Now, let's talk about uh, another use case. We have been talking about Kinesis Data Analytics. Kinesis Data Analytics is nothing but open source Apache Plink. We have been talking about you have Apache Plink in Amazon EMR as well. So when to use Kinesis Data Analytics versus Apache Plink on Amazon EMR? Again, the same thing. Kinesis Data Analytics is serverless. You will not have any access to software. If you wanted to deal with any custom configurations with Apache Plink, then you can have your own Amazon EMR cluster with Apache Plink on it. Choose right streaming service based on your specific use case. We've been talking about Amazon Kinesis Data Streams and Amazon MSK. They both do the same thing. Amazon Kinesis Data Stream data is stored in streams and charts, whereas Amazon MSK topics and partitions. And Amazon Kinesis Data Stream has a Lot of native integration with AWS services, but Amazon MSK is based on open source Apache Kafka. If you are looking for uh, very, very low latencies, where you need to, you can achieve like up to 20 to 30 milliseconds end to end latencies with custom Apache, with custom Apache Kafka configurations. But with Kinesis Data Streams, enhanced data you can only achieve like 70 milliseconds. Now, let us talk about, if you're just starting building data streaming application, maybe you can start with Kinesis Data Streams. But if you're already using Apache Kafka, open source is the, your technology vision, we recommend you to use Amazon MSK. Now let us talk about Amazon SK serverless is also there, Amazon MSK is there. When to use Amazon MSK versus Amazon MSK serverless? Again, the same thing. As I talked about it, if you want to make some Apache, Apache Kafka custom configuration, you will not have access to Amazon MSK serverless. And the, similarly, Amazon Kinesis Data Stream, we do have something called on-demand. It's like a serverless kind of a thing. If you don't know your data access patterns, then we recommend you to use Amazon Kinesis on-demand on uh, type. Choose ad query engine based on your business requirement. We have been talking about Ada query engine. Amazon Athena is uh, good for interactive queries on top of your Amazon S3 data lake. You can also use Amazon EMR for interactive queries. But Amazon EMR comes with many big data processing 
parts like Hadoop, Hive, Apache Plink, etc. But if you have a very, very large data sets, and uh, if uh, that is taking a lot of time, then you, might, uh, you can have your Amazon EMR cluster with Presto on it, because Amazon Athena is nothing but Apache Presto open source. And you can have same Amazon uh, Apache Presto with Amazon EMR cluster. And if you are familiar with uh, Hive, if you, are, you have been using Hive for your interactive queries, then you can have Amazon EMR with Hive on it. And then Amazon Redshift is good for running historical aggregations and many joins. So it's all depending upon your usage. You can pick and choose between Amazon Athena, Amazon EMR, and Redshift. We have been talking about data mesh. Let's talk about when to use data mesh. Data mesh is good when you have a multiple data producers and data consumers. But it is not good if you don't have a data as a product mindset, and it is not, it is not good for small organizations. If you don't have many data producers, many data consumers, it is not good to do the data. Now let us, we have been talking about innovating for future by using machine learning. First, think about your business problem. See your business problem can be resolved with business rules engine or maybe programmatically before thinking about solving that business problem by using machine learning. But if you want to do the machine learning, we have like various machine learning options. You can use AI services. Application, application developers, they can build the business intelligence applications by using AI services. Data scientists can build the end-to-end -end, um, machine learning workloads by using uh, Amazon SageMaker. And experienced ML, ML expert, they can use the machine learning frameworks based on their choice. These are the, what we recommend using right tool for the right job. These are all AWS purposeful data services. There are some best practices how to improve the performance across various services. And we always recommend to refer AWS well-architected lens for data analytics and machine learning for proven collection of best practices. These are the links. It, it is based on well, uh, AWS well-architected framework. Finally, our goal is to empower all personas. For example, here, data analysis want to do, do the interactive queries and business intelligence report. They can use Amazon Athena for interactive queries. They can use Amazon QuickSight and Amazon Redshift for business intelligence dashboard. Finally, automate everything. Infrastructure as a code so that you don't need to rebuild everything. We talked about layered architecture. If you build everything infrastructure as a code, then you have everything out there. And then build CID, CID, CD pipelines for our data pipelines as well as ML pipelines. If you want to accelerate your modern data strategy on AWS, we have many programs across Modernize, Unify, Invade. Please work with uh, your AWS account manager or solution architect to learn more about these programs. If you want to learn more about AWS modern data architecture, please refer to first four white papers. I wrote this first four white papers. First white paper talks about deriving insights from modern data by using AWS modern data architecture. And if you want to learn about modern data streaming architecture to derive low latency insight, refer second white paper, building modern data streaming architectures on AWS. If you want to learn how to build end-to-end data-driven architectures, then refer third white paper. And we have been talking about a lot of AWS data services. If you want to learn about what is the ideal usage patterns and anti-usage patterns, I would recommend you to use, uh, refer to big data analytics options on AWS that provide you the ideal usage patterns, anti-usage patterns for most of AWS data services. If you want to build secure end-to-end -end machine learning workloads on AWS, refer to fifth white paper. And if you are dealing with, uh, if you wanted to migrate commercial databases, like Oracle, Microsoft SQL, refer to white paper six and seven. It provides you the best practices, and it also provides you the homogeneous migration and heterogeneous migration. Heterogeneous migration means, like, if you wanted to migrate Oracle to PostgreSQL server, how to do. Those white papers will provide you the guidance. Now, we learned about all this modern data strategy, modern data architecture. 
If you want to make your hands dirty, we have an automated modern data architecture solution out there. It is part of AWS solution. Just bring your data and then try to derive insights from your data. And also, if you wanted to build machine learning workload, we have Amazon SageMaker examples in GitHub. You just bring your data, play around with your data, see those models can solve your business problems. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you learned something from this session. We started with learning what is modern data architecture and how to build modern data architectures on AWS. I would highly recommend to look at those white papers. And if you want to make your hands dirty, please look at the last two sections where you can bring the data and derive insights from modern data platform. And if you want to build the machine learning workloads by using Amazon SageMaker, refer the last one. This is my LinkedIn. If anybody wanted to connect, if you want to, call, if you want to talk to me offline, I'm happy to help. I would request everyone to please uh, uh, fill the survey in mobile app. Thank you so much for your time. I know it is Friday. You all are <laughs> went to a lot of uh, sessions, but you are still here. I'm happy to help you. We have three, four minutes. I'll be around here for uh, any follow-up questions.